quickly by for us, no longer satisfied in hunting out the insects underneath the rocks of the forest. Our interests and pursuits evolved into something new. We drift farther from the house, climbing the mountains beyond the grounds, enjoying the views of the countryside way beyond our reach. She kept up with me surprisingly well, for a woman. Hey. Most of the women I met at my father's dinner parties were frail and scrupulous about their appearances. Mary was unlike any of them, or their daughters who worked tirelessly to catch my eye. I had started work at my father's firm. I was nothing more than a file clerk at the time, but I gleaned many insights into the legal system from both my father and his partners, Jacob and Rosenberg. I had less time for our wild wanderings, which was a disappointment for both of us. But as Mary herself had undertaken the task of assisting her mother in the cleaning of the house, we saw each other very little. Sam, over here! Oh, hello Mary! What are you doing here? I work here, remember? What are you doing here? Shouldn't you be at work? I can't get there. There's too much snow on the roadways. Travel's gonna be impossible for the next few days. Oh! I guess that means I'll be stuck here for a few days, too. Yes, I'm sure there's some spare bedrooms in the servants' quarters for you. Ah, that's good to know. Aye, it is. Hi. The silence was palpable. True, it had been a few months since we had a real conversation. But there was something else to the silence. Something truly awkward for both of us. It's been a while, hasn't it been? Yes, it has. I've missed you. Uh... Oh. I, well, you know, I miss our hikes. <laughs> yes, of course. When I get some free time, we can go for another hike in the spring. I hope you weren't asking to do one now. Of course not, stupid. <laughs> I don't fancy trudging in the snow to the top of a mountain. <laughs> <laughs> another moment of silence. Oops. I noticed Mary was playing with her hands, and her leg twitched as she sat on the stone bench. Well, I'll let you get back to work. I don't want you to get in trouble for- No, wait, don't go. I'm on break. Oh, okay. Sure. I- I just wanted to say, well, I guess I just more than miss the hikes. I- In the briefest moment, as she searched for her words, I saw her in an entirely different light. She was a grown woman, physically and mentally. I saw the intelligence behind her eyes that made her both charming and irritating to deal with. I saw the twin bulges through her dress, and the curves of her body sent an inexplicable feeling through my body. She was no longer Mary, my friend. She had become something else to me. Mary, I... just want to say... I love you. She let out a small gasp and stared at me for a second. I reached out and grabbed her hand, which she did not pull back. I slid closer to her and wrapped my arms around her body and kissed her. I don't remember how long the kiss lasted, but the sudden appearance of Gregory out from the house forced us apart. Mary jumped to her feet and ran back into the house. As Gregory looked at me with a knowing grin, he walked into the snowdrifts, chuckling as my face burned with embarrassment at being caught doing something wholly inappropriate. She consumed my thoughts. I had to find her. To get some conclusion for the kiss that she had cursed me with. Cursed? That was pretty beautiful. And you call it a curse? Or is that foreboding? Now we've got a story. Wait, more forest. Oh. Give me thank you, invisible wall. Thank you. I did not want to go back out there. <laughs> no more freaky walls either. Let's go back inside. illusions. When they are gone, you may still exist, but you have ceased to live. Mark Twain. Noting. Now I am be. Surely not working again. I don't know. So 
you're just as lost as I am. But I am happy to be back inside. No more trees. Go away. Funny. I have good I have clarity again. Oh maybe that's why. I always feel a little suspicious when I walk to the correct place on my first try. But anyway, Mary's work, dear diary. I start work today at Samuel's house. The Cretans were impressed with my mom's work and they had a few openings. So now I'll be cleaning up the bedpans and scrubbing the floors. It's not glorious, but if I can prove myself for a time, I'll be making enough money to prep my own family. My parents can no longer work. That shouldn't be a long time, but accidents can happen. Especially at the docks where my father works. I won't be able to see Sam as much either, since now neither of us have much free time. But that's okay. I'm part of Legends, and we have plenty of free time. He said he was happy I'd be around the house, even though he's not around to talk. And he knows he's thinking of me. Of course, I'm a very kind and considerate individual. Hey, kid! It's easy to be kind of Samuel, may I speak with you a moment? I have something to tell you. Of course, sir. Go where? In here? The door was open. What is it, Father? I take it you remember the Harrisons. You've met them a few times at one of my parties, uh, with their daughter, Martha. Yes, I do. A very charming family. Yes, indeed. Well, they have just recently sold their estate in London, and are looking for property here across the pond, in Neverton City. Oh, that's good to hear. I should like to be seeing them again, very much. Indeed, for you shall be seeing them a lot more than you even realize. Uh, sir? It's... well... The firm hasn't been doing so well. Ever since Rosenberg held the conception, he had a real knack for this business. And now, the point is, we are losing money on the estate, and unless we can stop our clients from taking their business elsewhere, we'll eventually need to sell the estate. I know I can help! I can pick up a Rosenberg left! I know I can do this job if you give me the chance! I know you can do the job, son, but you'd have some pretty big shoes to fill. No, there's an even simpler solution to this problem. What is it? When Did the Harrisons poison? arrive in the States, they'll be spending a week or two here. To get acquainted with the area and locate a decent property. You and Martha always got along pretty well, and... What are you saying, sir? I'm the Mary Martha? <sighs> yes, my boy. They have a lot of money and are very generous with it. With you married to her, we'll have ourselves a little safety net. God knows, it takes a lot of money to keep this place in any decent shape. But I... I don't... doesn't... Doesn't seem what, my boy. She had always taken a fancy to you, and you cannot deny she's pleasing to the eye, knowing all the reasons. I do not deny that, but... I have important matters to take care of, Samuel. We'll discuss this another time. When she gets here, you will get to know her, and then ask for her father's permission in marriage. Now be on your way. Yes, sir. Reluctantly. How? Rosenberg is ailment. I have the worst news. Rosenberg has fallen ill with tuberculosis. He was walking home in the office when I was with them, and he collapsed, coughing incessantly. It was such a disturbing scene, everyone watching us. I was trying to get a mud covered Rosenberg onto his feet. With his hand and snow around him spattered. He struck fast and hard, but I lifted him up on one shoulder and strode slowly down the street. I walked him to his house where Cassano took him to bed when I went to get the doctor. Par. The doctor says his prognosis is good, especially for a man his age. He's been given a few months, but I was a very optimistic success by the doctor. Hosebert can be stubborn like a jack-o'-lantern, but that can only take you so far. It's such an odd feeling! 
It's probably fine for the past few weeks, though in retrospect I do remember he had been coughing perhaps a bit more than normal. I knew he shouldn't have been spending so much time in the rain, but he wouldn't listen. He absolutely insists on meeting with his clients, rain or shine. Well, you know how he took his work. He's half the reason the firm's doing so well. I thought you should know before the snow comes in and blocks you off from civilization. Come see him when the roads are cleared. Cassandra could use the support. Take care, friend. Lawrence Jacob. I told you to not need to worry. The crap is still empty. I don't remember closing the door. Now what? now? I didn't leave my door open. Who could be in there? Huh. There are no monsters. Mary! Samuel! I, I just wanted to say, I care about you a lot. We've always been there for each other, and, well, I don't think we belong together like this. Mary, I, these things I feel for you. I had no idea until now this is what I wanted. I wanted you here with me. You're the only one I've ever truly cared about. And I don't want you to go. But there's just too much in between us. Like hell there is! Listen to me, please! I understand if things feel like they're moving fast, but know that I will always be here for you. That I love you so very much. It's okay if you don't feel the same, but... Oh, Sam, of course I do. I didn't have the heart to tell her about my conversation with Father. I couldn't bear it, and I doubt she could either. As we held each other in our arms, there'd have to be some way to convince my father that marrying Martha was unnecessary. That he'd have to be confident I could pick up the slack where Rosenberg had failed. I just needed time. Mary would be mine. <coughs> are, are you alright? <coughs> yeah, yes, it's just a cough. I'll be fine. No, I didn't get my Tinder box. <laughs> I fear death follows every fear of life. A man who lives fully is prepared to die Two anytime. Weeks later. Mary had caught tuberculosis. That's what I thought. She tried to hide it, but her parents found her blood spattered pillow from Why? her nighttime coughing fits. I hired the best doctor I could to take a look at her. No. Despite her parents' objections no. that they needed no charity. No. It wasn't for them that I did, but for my own reassurance. He confirmed the fearful prognosis, confined her Aye. Pain, and gave her some special tonic to help treat it. She was given a 50% chance Aye. of survival due to her stubbornness in which she accepted her fate. Samuel, you're stepping on my toes! Uh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> That's okay, just pay attention. Mary had me worried terribly, but my responsibilities to Martha, to my estate, really, took up a large portion of my free time. Martha was a sweet girl, though not unlike the other girls who glanced my way. It was obvious she was attracted to me, but I couldn't make myself let go of Mary. Martha saw this in me. Every time I brought up Mary in our conversations, of the fondness I expressed with my friend, my true beloved. I'm glad to see you two enjoying yourselves. Oh yes, he's such a good dancer. That's good to hear. If I may break you up for a moment, I wish to speak with my son. Oh, okay. I'll be sitting at the table. I have just spoken to George and asked for your permission to marry Martha. Father! I'm a grown man who... Who has spent too long ignoring the situation we're in. You have a responsibility to this estate and to the family. Business has not improved much since Rosenberg's death. Which is why I keep asking you to give me a chance at your work. I'm no longer a ten-year-old who needs constant supervision. No! You will ask Martha for her hand in marriage tonight before they go to bed. And for Christ's sake, you will put aside your ceiling fetuation with that peasant girl rotting in her bed? 
She's in a condition to have mats in the household and will probably be dead in a few months anyway. You, you bastard! Don't talk to me like that! You will ask her tonight. I will be watching you very closely, Sam. Did I just say that? If I loved you less, I might be able to talk about it more. This is the fifth time this week you visited Mary. If she's really getting better, there's no need to fret over her. I'm sorry. Surely you can understand my concern for her. I've known her for more than half of my life. She's a dear friend. I know she is. But you barely spent any time with me. If we are to be married, I want to know more of my future husband. I want to know he cares for me just as much as I care for him. I do care for you. You can still be friends with her when we're married. I know how much she means to you. I don't want to get between your friendship, but I need reassurance you aren't marrying me for convenience. Martha, dear. Martha, I'm not married. My you dear. Stop You're it. You're a sweet girl who no doubt is suitable for intelligent Get conversation and child rearing. You'll make a fine wife for me. And I will do everything in my power to be a dutiful husband you require. Dutiful, yes. But can you be loving? No. My heart's not I just it. heard the news from my mother. You are engaged to George Harrison's daughter? Yes. Yes, I am. I've met her before. She's a nice girl. I think you two would make a great couple. If I had a choice, it would be you I'd marry. <laughs> don't, don't say that. You know it wouldn't work, even if I got through this. Don't say that. You're getting stronger. You're fighting it. You'll be climbing the mountains with me in a month. Samuel, all I want is for you to be happy. Don't cling to me. You are destined to have a life different from mine. You don't reciprocate? Samuel, please, don't make this harder for either of us. I have to go. I'll, I'll talk to you later, Mary. Mary's dilemma. Dear diary, my hands shake as I write this. I've never felt so apprehensive in all my life. It was the first time in a while I'd spoken with Samuel in Cretton's courtyard. He professed his love for me and embraced me. We have embraced numerous times during our friendship, but this was the first time he did as if we were lovers. There was such commitment and warmth in it, it was almost paralyzing. Friends with him for such a time. He never showed any sign of reciprocation, so I kept my feelings under control as best well as I could. He said those words to me. I felt like a great torrent of water released at once. And I could finally have my Samuel to me. But yet, a voice was crying inside my head. And I only know how to stop to listen. I am but the poorest servant woman. And Samuel's an educated, wealthy, soon to be loyal, working for his father. I know her family makes me love. They know for certain they would not have sent me as a wife for their son. I am disheartened and motivated at the same time to prove I can be a good wife for Samuel. Dutiful, loyal, not to mention decent counterbalance for his occasional childish tantrums. I know him better than anyone. Better than me to guide his hand with such a feminine hand. Kendall. You'll get better. This can't happen. 